Apple has recently reported that from June to late September of this year, they've had the highest number of Mac sales in history, with the most popular Mac by far being the M1 MacBook Air. And Apple's previous best quarter was Q4 2020, which was once again attributed to the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. Consumers are obviously aware of how amazing Apple's M1 chip is, with outstanding battery life and even better CPU performance than any other Intel Mac released before it. In 2021, Apple released the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips, which were both enhanced versions of the M1, with more CPU cores, more GPU cores, and more video encoding and decoding engines. All this made the M1 look slow, as even the base M1 Pro chip was twice as fast as the M1 in day-to-day real-world tests and saved us two entire hours in our Zone of Tech Performance Analysis series. The M1 Max was then even more powerful, especially on the GPU side, where it got almost quadrupled the performance of the M1 and almost three times more than the highest-end 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro, while also being significantly faster than a maxed-out 27-inch iMac in every single way. So what about Apple's chips for 2022? Well, the one that you'll care about the most is the M2 chip. And judging by its name, you would assume that it is more powerful than the M1, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max, but that is not actually the case. The M1 chip inside the MacBook Air had a TDP of 10 watts. Then, inside the 13-inch MacBook Pro, it had a TDP of 15 watts, thanks to it being actively cooled. The M1 Pro chip goes up to 25 watts in the 14-inch MacBook Pro, while the M1 Max chip can go up to even as high as 45 watts inside the 16-inch. The M2 is expected to have basically the same TDP as the M1, and hence, a lower overall performance than the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. However, the main advantage of the M2 would be even more efficiency when compared to the M1, as it is said to be manufactured on a more efficient TSMC N4P manufacturing process, which, according to recent news, it is still a 5 nanometer process. Yeah, fortunately, not the 4 nanometers that was rumored before, but the good news is that it is still said to be more power efficient. Of course, the performance of the M2 would also be improved over the M1. CPU-wise, we're still said to have the same 8 cores, but running at a higher clock speed. The M1s for high-performance cores ran at a 3.2 GHz clock speed. This could be improved to 3.3 GHz, but I honestly don't see this going any higher than that, as it would negatively impact the battery life even with that more efficient manufacturing process. The GPU, however, will get a bigger upgrade from 8 cores to 10 which should give us a 25% improvement in overall graphics performance if we are to go by the linear performance increase that adding more GPU cores gave us with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. This means that in the GFX Bench Aztecs Ruins off-screen test, we could see a frame rate as high as 97 frames per second, up from 77.5. That's actually as high as the Radeon Pro 5500M, which was what uh, we had inside the almost maxed out 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro. And the fact that we could get this from the extremely power efficient M2 chip is just nuts. Now, there will be a bit version of the M2 chip as well, with just 9 GPU cores, but even that would still give us a 12.5% GPU improvement over the non-binned M1 chip. With that, we could expect a frame rate of about 87.5 frames per second in that same GFX benchmark, which would match the Radeon Pro 5300M inside the baseline 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro. But of course, that SM2 chip would very likely have a dedicated H.264 and 265 video encoder and decoder. So just like the M1 Pro chip, which means that in video editing, even a binned M2 MacBook Air would easily outperform a 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro, which is just ridiculous, as that machine was aimed at professional users and creators. And speaking of the MacBook Air, this is expected to be the very first device to utilize that M2 chip. This new Air will be fanless, and the baseline model will come with that bin version of the M2 chip, likely with a 10 watt TDP. Oh, and if you want to learn more about this new MacBook Air, check out our latest video right here. The second Mac to use the M2 chip will be an updated low-end MacBook Pro, which could either keep the same design that the M1 model has or get the new updated 14-inch design. Most rumors are pointing towards this same design though. But because the Pro will have an active fan, the M2 chip will be able to draw more power, 15 watts or even more, if we are to go by the M1's power usage. The third device to get the M2 chip would be the 24-inch iMac. 
So this got updated in 2021 with a completely new design as well as the M1 chip. And we could see this updated with the M2 chip for that extra GPU performance, which was really where the M1 iMac struggled with. And the same goes with the M1 Mac Mini. If Apple updates the 24 inch iMac with the M2, the M1 Mac Mini would also get updated and have a very similar TDP to this new iMac. Okay, now aside from the M2, the next chips that I wanna talk about are the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. Now, before that, I wanna show you something truly useful. This is Clean My Mac X, our sponsor for this video, and it's a tool that I've been using for the past nine years to keep my Mac running fast. So let me quickly show you how to use it. The first thing that you see is the smart scan feature where Clean My Mac X will run a number of tasks to speed up your system with the press of a button. And if you wanna dive deeper, you can. For example, in the cleanup panel, I can easily clear up junk files from apps and get over six gigabytes back. In the protection panel, I can not only scan for malware, but I can also disable individual privacy settings for each app. The speed panel allows me to disable login items, run maintenance scripts, re-index spotlight, repair disk permissions, and many more to speed up my system. The applications panel allows me to fully uninstall apps by removing every trace of them, even those that are not from the App Store, as well as remove app extensions. And then the Files panel gives us the space lens that shows me a bird's eye view of the biggest files on my system to quickly clear up space. Check out Clean My Mac X by using the link below. And now, back to the video. In terms of the M2 Pro and M2 Pro Max, we haven't really seen any leaks on them yet. In fact, I'm very certain that Apple won't even release the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips next year, and instead, they would focus solely on the M2 chip and on something else as well, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. Now, the M2 chip is expected to be released in June at WWDC, which means that between the release of the M1 and the release of the M2, there would have been almost a two-year wait. So it makes a lot of sense for Apple to alternate between the standard and the pro versions of their chips every other year. Also, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips are already insanely powerful, so there isn't really a need for an M2 Pro and an M2 Max chip just yet. I do think that Apple is literally going to uh, capitalize on the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips as much as they can and only release the follow-up to them when it is absolutely required. But something that Apple will definitely release next year is a chip suitable for that new Mac Pro, which is said to be the M1 Max Duo and the M1 Max Quad. Now, we've already seen many reports that Apple is working on a monster of a chip with 20 or even 40 CPU cores and as many as 64 and 120 GPU cores. Now, those numbers just happen to be double and quadruple of the CPU and GPU cores offered by the non bin version of the M1 Max. Not only that, but the code names for these chips are Jade 2C Die and Jade 4C Die. Once again, hinting at the idea that these are not new chips, but rather two and four M1 Maxes linked together. But how is this even possible? Like, how can you merge or link two M1 Max chips? Well, apparently the M1 Max chip has this weird section that has not been included in any of Apple's renders, which could be a die-to-die -die interconnect, allowing two M1 Max dies to be linked together and then the two linked M1 Max dies could be further linked to another two using an IO die interconnect system, which is uh, similar to what AMD is already using on their chips. This won't be as efficient as the die to die interconnect, but it would still drastically scale up the performance. And this will allow the next gen Mac Pro to have up to 40 CPU cores, up to 128 GPU cores, and 256 gigabytes of shared memory. This is also video memory, keep in mind, not just RAM, with up to a 1.6 terabyte per second bandwidth. And considering that the M1 Max already beats out all laptop CPUs out there at the moment, and even outperforms a mobile RTX 3080 and a lot of real world tests, the M1 Max Quad should outperform any desktop CPU out there easily and even put a 3090 to shame. Of course, that this new Mac Pro won't be cheap, but the performance would absolutely be unmatched. But wait, there is more. Apple promised us a full transition to Apple Silicon by the end of 2022, and the only Macs that haven't been updated are the high-end Mac Mini and the high-end iMac. And rumors are pointing towards the iMac getting the M1 Max Duo chip, with the new Mac Mini getting the M1 Max. This means that Apple would have some insanely powerful desktop options 
even before the Mac Pro is out. Oh, and by the way, we're actually upgrading all of our editing machines in the office to 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pros just because they're more than twice as powerful as our maxed out 2019 27-inch iMac. But this new 2021 iMac would be more than twice as powerful as the M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro, as keep in mind, this iMac would also be able to draw more power being a desktop computer. And then in 2023, Digitimes reports that Apple will update all of their chips to a smaller and more efficient three nanometer manufacturing process. That's when we would very likely see the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, as well as apparently a surprise release uh, with the M3. Yeah, lots of exciting updates on Apple's new chips. I honestly don't think that there's been a better time to be a tech nerd. And if you are a tech nerd, definitely subscribe for more interesting tech videos like this one, hopefully was, and check out our performance analysis series. It's essentially an automated benchmark series, a benchmark tool that we created with real-time graphs, and we have one episode at the moment uh, with the M1 Pro and the M1. So yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. I'm Daniel, this is Means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.